Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Let's Process That podcast. I'm Emily Christopher. And I'm Nick Connor Camp. And we are so glad that you have joined us again. Welcome to those faithful listeners and welcome to those who are brand new. We're so glad that you joined us. And last week's episode was pretty heavy. We were talking about generational things. We were talking about family stuff, the good, the bad, the ugly. And so make sure you go back and check that episode out. And we are also going to take another listener requested topic this week. I just want to say thank you to everybody who gives us feedback. We love it. We love it because this podcast is all about us processing together. I know it's between Nick and I, but we want to stir up conversation. We want to hear from you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who write in to us, whether it's via social media or through our email, let's process that podcast at gmail.com. And one thing that we got back with feedback was that people really miss that we haven't been sharing our favorite things. Um, We did that early on. Um, A few episodes at the beginning, we shared like something that we were really enjoying or whatever. So we're bringing it back today. It's back. So here we go. Nick, I'm going to let you go first. (laughs) Cigars. Cigars. Yeah, the new thing is cigars. I I work with a bunch of veterans. I was in Marine Corps. I got a bunch of veteran guys. And I'm like, hey, let's go down into Casablanca. Let's hang out at Cigar Bar. And I was like, "Uh, I couldn't even get a cigar started before I would turn green and throw up. It's not going to happen. And they're like, oh, no, no, come on down. We'll show you how to do it. And so I hung out with the guys. And you have to understand the way men hang out. Men don't sit across from each other and look eyeball to eyeball and pierce into each other's soul. We sit side by side, shoulder to shoulder, looking ahead as we communicate. So it's a cigar bar. What are you People scared of, you- Nick? <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know me. I'm a very a high emotional quotient kind of guy. But most guys. Yeah, yeah. And right. so you go to the cigar thing, you grab a cigar. And it takes like an hour, hour and a half smoke a cigar. So you wow. sit down. With your buddy to your right, the other to the left, and you're all looking at a TV screen, some sports thing, and you sit there and you smoke on a cigar, and you just say, hey, what do you think the meaning of life is? And your buddy, you know, you know, starts talking, but it's not like, it's not too vulnerable because you're sitting shoulder to shoulder, you're looking straight ahead, and you're smoking a cigar. And when the cigar is done, you get up and leave. If you stay after the cigar is gone, dude, that's a bromance. I mean, you have... You have crossed a bridge. So as soon as it's done, sorry, guys, got to go. Got the little missus needs me back home, whatever. But cigars, that's my new thing is I enjoy a good cigar with my buddies every once in a while. I love that. Do you have a favorite? There's one called Leaf by Oscar. Okay. It's really cool because what cigars come in cellophane, but this mm-hmm. one is wrapped in a tobacco leaf and folded over. And so you unwrap the tobacco leaf smell it you actually Mm. light it on fire and then burn your cigar from it rather than from a lighter so you're getting pure tobacco and and it smokes the whole thing i think the idea is better than the cigar but i I, you know (laughs) if you ask that's probably the only cigar i know by name is leaf by oscar i love it well i'm very happy for you and the the bros broing out um I will now pivot to the polar opposite of my favorite things, which are my earrings. And several of you (laughs) have commented on the earrings I wear on the show. And most of them are by a designer. She's out in San Diego. She's actually friends of my boyfriend's family. Her name's Anya, and her brand is called Hyde, H-Y-D-E. You can find her on Instagram. Um, And this is not sponsored, by the way. I just am obsessed with all her earrings. Um, They're very funky. These um, look like Jigglypuff, so I really appreciate that. And then one other thing that I'm really enjoying is my friend Rachel got me this mug that said, I love podcasts. And it's a (laughs) mug with a cat on it. I love podcasts. I just just misspelled. (laughs) No, the last episode I misspelled and said podcasts. And I didn't mm. even catch I didn't even catch how brilliant that is, but yeah, that's pretty that's pretty wild. It's pretty good. So 
here I am with another cat mug on another episode. So mm. you're you're all welcome. But yes, my favorite things are are these earrings. So I love how you had this like masculine cigar moment, and I'm ready for some beautiful, unique, funky female driven earrings but you know what anybody can wear these so if some guys watching this if you like it you can also buy these earrings i'm not gonna put you in a box <laughs> and some cats made their way into our podcast i don't know how every that time mm, the cats um painful <laughs> um so what we are talking about this week like i said was also listener submitted and I found it very interesting because I've recently had a little conversation with friends about this, and people were asking about the five love languages. And if you don't know what they are, we'll kind of break that down, um, what it is. And the, the questions around it were really like, okay, like how important is it to know your partner's love language? Um, how adaptable can we be to use these? So I'm going to try to remember all these. So. They are quality time, acts of service, words of affirmation, physical touch. Gift giving. Gift giving. How could I forget? I know. Um, <laughs> how dare I? And basically, um, this comes really from a book that was written and I, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the guy's name. I can't remember. Oh, I'm so, gosh. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Ugh. I'll look it up as I talk. But, um. There was a book Smalling? that came out. Uh, let me just Google it. it. Might be Gary Smalling. Um, Go ahead. That feels right. Um, and it basically is saying that these three or five things are how we give and receive love. Gary Chapman. Gary oh, wow. Chapman. I'm so sorry. Okay. Wow. You were kind of close. I was close. <laughs> Gary close. Smalling. First name. Um, so again, we how we give and receive love. and. Um, I think it's very important for us to know our partner's personality and how they give and receive love. But I also believe that there is a lot of space to grow and for that to change. And so we're just going to explore that today. Um, and I know, Nick, you have some thoughts on this. So I'm going to toss it back to you before I really dive into some of my thoughts with it. Okay, so before we can get to the crux of the conversation, we have to just lay some grid work. So let's yes. you and I talk for just a second about the five love languages, give some examples, mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. pros and cons of each or whatever. And then before we get into the questions that we actually were sent. So you and I grew up in a culture where we had marriage seminars, marriage retreats, stuff like that. And part of that, we, were, we would have something that usually talked about a love language or something. And so... Love must be expressed. That's just, that's mm -hmm. just, if you love somebody, you express it. If you're in a relationship and they never express love, they don't love you. I mean, it's, it, I hate to inform you, but that's love must be expressed. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with physical touch. Physical touch is um, the person who wants to hold hands, who wants to, you to come sit on their lap. They want to cuddle and watch a movie together. It's not necessarily sexual, but it is more physical. It is touching. It is being together. It is walking up behind you and wrapping their arms around you. Um, physical touch is saying, I love you so much. I want you in my space. I want mm -hmm. to, there to be no space between us. I want to feel you. I want to touch you. And they may play with your hair. They may. It's just, again, it doesn't have to be sexual. It's just physical. It's just, I want to touch you and be in your space. Um, those are some examples. Anything you want to add to that one? No, that was perfect. I had someone who had baggage with their husband because every time they came up behind them and wrapped their arms around them, they thought that they were trying to get sex. And oh. they were saying, uh, no, I'm just, I love you. I want to grab you. I want to hold you and that kind of thing. And so there is that, that one caveat you gotta be careful of with physical touch. But for the most part, there are people that are touchy, clingy. They want to sleep and touch each other. Um, mm -hmm. There's others that want to sleep on the far ends of the bed. There's others that want to sit around and hold hands. And others just want to sit on the same couch. And that's good. But physical touch always wants to connect. Now, as we're talking about love languages, we tend to want to give love in the language where we like to receive love. 
For sure. And that's that's a real caveat because other the person we love probably has a different love language than us. So we have to learn to give in a different way than we want to receive. That's physical mm-hmm. touch. So now let's go to gift giving. M, what do we know <laughs> about the love language of gift giving? So receiving gifts is pretty self-explanatory. This person loves to be bought things. And it doesn't have to be luxury items, which I'm sure no one's that upset about a luxury item. Um, But this could be like you bring them lunch at work. You like did little, little things, even like I said, big or small, but definitely giving of gifts of any kind. They feel like you love them. These are people that if you don't give them a birthday gift, they are offended. Um, they want you to express through gifts, and they feel like they are loved whenever they receive something. Like I said, not just a luxury thing, even if it was like a homemade something, but in the form of a gift. That's okay. Receiving Kim, gifts. That was beginner level it gift giving <gasps> things. You didn't even say don't give them a gift card. They don't want a gift card. <gasps> oh, they want mm-mm. yes. So so like um, one is. The, the, the number one thing about gift giving is when you go into a place, a store, and you see something that looks like the person that you love. And yes. you just buy it and you said, this looks just like you. Um, for instance, um, Tina's love language is gift giving. So one of the things I learned early on is that when we would go into a store to go clothes shopping, I'd go sit on the couch and just wait for it to be over. Whatever it was, just please be over. The three hours of shopping, please be over. Mm-hmm. And um, and then one day she says, I just want you to go in the store with me and look for things that look like me and say, hey, you look great in this and hold it up. And I'm like, really? You want me to participate? She says, part of gift giving is that you saw something that looked like me. So you went and bought it. And... And I remember early in our marriage, I was like, I, I really went on a spree of trying to take care of her. And so we went, we did, we went on a trip and then I took her to dinner and then I bought her a bunch of stuff. And the next day she's scrolling, looking for new stuff to buy. And I'm like, how many clothes do you need? When will you ever be satiated? I have bought you clothes and gifts. When is it enough? And she said, never. Never. I was stunned. I said, what do you mean never? And she says, well, clothes is the way I express myself. And I love gifts. And I I love to be loved. And you can't love me enough. So never. And I thought, oh, my God. Oh, how am I going to do this forever? So get back to, I'm sorry, but I know a few things about the love language of gift giving. Hey, you're the expert. (laughs) it, it, it It needs to be something what woman doesn't want to see what you believe she looks like through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up those earrings or that dress or that purse and say, girl, bam, this is you all day long. And you hit the mark. There's a, there's a part of being known and seen and loved through gift giving. You can't get any other way. That's all brother's going to say about that. Yeah. Um, one of my very close friends, Noelle Frost is (laughs) the best gift giver. She like pinpoint stuff. It's very strategic. And so that's one way she shows love is she is like, I saw this, like she has bought me several pairs of earrings and I just talked about how much I love earrings. And like, she's like, I saw these and thought of you. And I'm, and it's, it's again, it's that being seen and known thing. You're like, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, somebody saw this and associated with me and then purchased it. Wow. That's such a big compliment. Um, Adrian, my boyfriend, um, hasn't bought me too many like apparel items or jewelry he's like jewelry for girls is so scary like he's like i don't know what to pick out but he has picked out um these really cool sunglasses and i was so impressed when he did it because like you were saying like it's just this thing where like this person is gets me and it's just cool because it like manifests into something you can touch or use Mm -hmm. and so it's just a really cool thing um so Best date idea for $5. Take her to coffee. Okay. And then say, I need to know all your sizes and your favorite colors. <gasps> what flowers hey. you like. 
and sit down and investigate her for an hour. So you have a cheat sheet to put in your wallet when you go into a store and you know what size to buy when you see something that looks like her. <laughs> hey, look at that. That is for free, ladies and gentlemen. Like, and this goes both ways. If your person's a gift, if receiving gifts are a thing, male or female, take notes. That's good. That is so good. Um, the next one we'll go on is acts of service. And okay. this acts one, of ser- mm-hmm. yeah, well, I was going to say acts of service. This is for a lot of times I feel like my friends, once they have kids, the shifts to like their top one and acts of service are like you um, did something for them. Like you loaded and unloaded the dishwasher. You um, vacuumed out their car without them asking for it. You just went and did something. You took a burden away from them that made their lives easier or surprised them in some level by doing an act that would bring benefit to them or relieve a burden. Um, That is acts of service. Anything else on that one? Yes. You told (laughs) me to listen to... Uh, we do hard things uh, by Glennon Doyle's on her podcast. You told me to listen to that and a couple other podcasts before we started yes. ours. So I was listening to Glennon the other day while I was running a lake, and this guy calls in and he says, "I used to think the way I showed my wife was I loved her is I mopped the floor and I cleaned the toilets." He says, "Now I realize that's called adulting. Why do we think that it's the woman's responsibility?" to mop the floor and and to clean the toilets. Gift giving is doing something for her that you know that she hates to do for herself. So adulting is helping do the chores around the house. Gift giving might be clean her car, get it detailed. Or acts of service. It, I'm sorry, acts of service. Gifts, what did I say? Yeah. Oh, gift giving. giving. Well, acts of service are a gift. They just are a <laughs> service gift. So, yes. So, um, Acts of service might be, you know, like cleaning her car and detailing her car. It might be doing something, a chore that both of you hate, but you do it because you know she hates it and you don't want her to have to deal with that. So you take care of it. I think the best act of service is coming, oh, gift giving and act of service is coming home with a $1 Dove chocolate bar and handing okay. it to your wife. And she says, What's this for? So you all have something to do while I give the kids a bath and put them to bed. Hey. One dollar. <laughs> One dollar. Yeah. Yeah. So again, acts of service, you're relieving a burden or bringing some kind of benefit through action that you're taking. Um, the next one we'll do is my top love language, which is quality time. I love quality time. Um, This one, again, speaks for itself. This is just spending time with someone. And I am such a weirdo with this. Like, I love bringing people to run errands with me (laughs) that I love. I love for them just to be around me when I'm doing, like, the mindlessness of life. Um, My... Uh, assistant turned coworker turned best friend Allison. I would make her literally. I was like, "Can you just be in the car with me? I've got three errands to run, but I desperately want you near me. Will you just go with me?" And she's like, "Yeah, absolutely." And so I just thought it was the best thing ever just to be together doing nothing or doing like chores, basically. Um, so it is funny, but quality time like we love trips. If we can go do something together, if we can have an experience together, um, it can be, like I said, anything from like mindlessness and just like sitting together in the same room versus like us having some really cool experience together. But like quality time where we're just talking and doing an activity we love together, quality time. You know what's fascinating about that is that my son, Hayden Luke, is part of a group of guys called Mighty Men. There's eight or ten of them. And they meet every week. And, in fact, they meet on Thursday nights. And last week I asked Hayden Luke if he could get together on Wednesday or Thursday. He said, I can't on Wednesday, but I can't on Thursday. He, he chose them over me. And oh, yeah. but So they, mm-hmm. they meet once a week, and, and they learn stuff. 
But then they have weddings and go away for a weekend. They go camping. They drive tanks. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. But then when one of them needs a roof on their house, they all go spend all weekend. I think that they love each other and they show that by quality time. Every mm-hmm. time some one of them has a need, they all show up and do it together because they like being together. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. You will overlook like the hard labor of something just to be around people. Um, And that's why when companies or organizations can't get their people to do stuff outside of the office, I'm like, that's a major culture problem because they don't want to spend any quality time together. So that's broken. Um, But yeah, quality time. And then the last one is words of affirmation. That is Nick so much, so much. So this is the people that love a hype man. Like if you can hype them up, if you can affirm them, tell them how awesome they are, say unique things about them that are special. They just hold that. These are the people that they would be upset if you didn't write them a birthday card and you better write some stuff in it. Don't just sign (laughs) your name. You better write some things um, because they will hold that. These are also the people who never throw away letters birthday cards, stuff like that. If you have, look at that behind him. If you're watching, if you're listening, you can't see it, but Nick has just all kinds of stuff pinned up. There's some cards behind him, all that stuff. So these are the people that words mean so much to them. And they're usually the same people who can articulate and do the same for other people. Did I nail so two it? Th- two, you <laughs> nailed it. Great job. Two stories on that. Uh, Number one is when we first got married, Tina would pick out a card that said what she wanted to say, and she'd sign, love, Tina. And I'm like, I I don't want to know what Hallmark says to me. I I want to know what you say to me. I'd rather be the blank card, and you use your unique language to specifically say what you want to say. Second of all, I know a couple that got married, and her love language was words of affirmation. So he went out and wrote like a dozen cards. You know, he, he wrote a bunch of cards. And every time, you know, they'd get in a fight, every time she came home sad, he'd pull out a card and say, oh, I'm so sorry you felt so sad because I got you this card and I wrote this. And she was like, I can't believe this. Every time I'm having a bad day, this guy is is prepared for me, you know, until she found a stash. <laughs> and once she found his stash of pre-written cards, then, you know, wah, wah, wah. that didn't go well. So for words of affirmation, we want you to use your words to describe mm-hmm. what you see. Again, it's about being seen and known. We want to be seen. We want to be known. And if you can say who we are to you in an affirming way, it means a lot to us. Yeah. So now that we've so, broken down what those are, let's dive a little deeper. Um, I want to talk about what do you do when... Your partner's love language has shifted when it has changed, especially for those people who've been together for a long time. And, you know, they may have been a quality time person and now they need words of affirmation. Um, I am also along the lines that in different, like it'll change for me. I think it changes more than we notice sometimes um, just because we get in the cycles of life. But, um, how do we break out of keeping that confinement in like, oh, I know what their love language is, and we kind of get cycloned into that? Um, so I'm curious, Nick, you've been married for a while, um, and you both a have minute. changed a minute, um, and you both have changed so much over the years. Um, and I've only known you guys for a little over a decade now, and I've been able to watch you both even change and grow and. Um, so what's that like when your partner begins to shift and how they give and receive love? So a couple thoughts. Number one, some people don't even believe that you do change, that your personality profile changes, your Enneagram changes, your love language changes. And I would disagree with that vehemently. Um, Mm -hmm. second of all is that most particularly guys, I'll take the hit, particularly guys, are not as aware of what actually matters for the woman. Uh, Some guys are like, hey, this is how I show love. Hope it's enough. And I'm like, dude, that's not good enough. Because it doesn't feel like love to the other person. Mm -hmm. So if you come rolling in with, you know, some some generic gifts, some store-bought candy, some 
you know, I hate going to Valentine's Valentine Day at Ingalls and watching all these last minute dudes trying to pick up flowers. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, you're mailing it in, right? So that's first of all, is that a lot of guys don't know how and are not aware. Second of all, ask if you ask a woman what matters to her, she's going to tell you. And I know one woman that she, her thing is self care, and for an hour every night she takes a bath. Do not knock on that door. Do not bother her. Leave her alone for one hour. She want. See, I think space should be the sixth love language. I need space. I need some. I need. I talked to a guy recently. He said, I need one night a week where I just get to be a guy where I can go mm-hmm. out and do it. So I think space is the thing. However, go back to your question. You asked, what do you do when you change? I've said this before on this podcast, and it's something that Chip Judd says. Every three months, you just sit down with your partner and re-clarify expectations because one of you two has changed or the situation of your life has changed. And so one of our podcasts, I don't know which one, but about a month or two ago, she come busting in after listening to podcasts, and I hadn't listened to it. We filmed these like a month ahead of time. I hadn't listened. So she comes busting in and said, your love language has changed. We need to go to have a lunch. We need to have a meeting. And I was like, what? What are you even talking about? She says, your podcast. And so it is true. Our love languages do change. And I think that staying current is one of the hardest things in a relationship. Because the death nail to a relationship is complacency mm-hmm. and thinking that you've already know everything there is to know and there's mm-hmm. no more wonder in the other person. And I think that having these kind of conversations helps us to clarify, execute, and experience magic again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I know some people, you know, when it, when it is a lot of work, like if your partner, um, has a love language that's sometimes harder to, for you to pinpoint or to understand, like, um, you know, people, people who have gift giving or gift receiving people always like, oh, they just want like Louis Vuitton bags and all this stuff. But sometimes we overcomplicate things. Um, and you know, as people change and different things happen to them in different seasons, like you may need something else or they may need something else. And so my job is to adapt and to listen and observe and to pivot where I need to. Um, because if I care about this person, I want them to know that I love them. And so it may take me having to relearn some things or learn new things. Um, because every long-term relationship I've had, um, I definitely don't have a type. There's some people, they date pretty much the same kind of person over and over again. I have never like, (laughs) and so I've had to really learn, um, personalities and love languages with the people that I've had long-term relationships with. And so it takes work and it's also allowing that person to change. And that's really scary. Absolutely. So think about the mom who has three kids under five. So if her love language is physical touch, but she has three kids pulling on her, one mm-hmm. breastfeeding, she may, that may not be her need. She may be overstimulated. She mm-hmm. may be saying, you know what I need? It's a max of service. Mm -hmm. What I need is some quality time, just me and you. Let's just go sit and watch a movie together. But I am tired of being touched all day long, needy, Mm -hmm. pulling on me. And it's a legit seasonal change. And we've got to pay attention to that and know what, what, how we're like, for instance, I'm in a very busy season right now. And, you know, quality time, um, quality time would be horrible for me right now. I don't want to sit for three days doing nothing on a porch. I am so busy that just, that would not do anything for me. So realizing that we as human beings change, grow, mature, Mm -hmm. and we check in periodically because we care. 
what is it that you need in this season? I think that's an appropriate question for someone you love. Mm -hmm. And I know there's five love languages, but there's so much more. Well, five love languages by Gary Chapman. But there are so many other ways that people receive love. I know like one of the things that I always appreciate is when Adrian makes me laugh. Like com like comedic relief and like comedy stuff and silliness and goofiness, I think should be its own as well. Um, because that's important to me. Like that is a pillar of my interactions <laughs> is comedy. I love to laugh. And so that's another way. And I think also understanding that there's so much more out there than even just these five things. Cause again, humans love to be able to like narrow everything in and like try to put things in a box because it makes us feel safe. But we also have to be very open to being like, Oh, there's so much more. It's like the same thing with personality stuff. And I've, I've had seasons where I've loved learning about the Enneagram. Now I'm like, I don't, ever really want to talk about it again, like I'm burnt out on some stuff or Myers-Briggs or whatever. Um, But not just pinning in what we've outlined. Um, Because like I said, there's definitely these five love languages are great. And I think there's a lot of truth in there. But I also think there's a lot of other things um, that somebody may need that may not be on the list because we're unique and we're human. I agree. Dr. Laura Schlesinger, which is a She writes books on relationships. She did a radio show and she basically wrote a book about the proper feeding and care of husbands. Okay. And she says, basically there's three things. You sex them, you feed them and you praise them. And if you do those three things, you'll be fine. So, well, I, but for a population that works, how many Southern men do you know that cooking Southern food for them is their love language? Mm -hmm. It's real, right? Where we come from, if the little missus goes in the kitchen and whips up some buttermilk biscuits and some gravy, man, he feels like king of the world. So that's a love language. And so it's just fascinating how there are more than five, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, The key is, is figure out yours. Yeah. You don't have to know anybody. You're like, this is complicated. No, there's seven, eight billion people on the planet. You only have to know one. All you have to do is become interested and it excellent about one person. That's all you got to do. Yeah. And not being afraid to go outside of the norm. Like the thing that you just listed is very much like a old school Southern male yep. thing. Yep. Um, but it's like uh, Adrian and I have had so many conversations where he's like, I don't want you to ever be a housewife. I want you to always have a career like you have too many skill sets and things that you want to do for me to ever ask that of you. Not saying that's evil. That's awesome if you get to stay home. And that is very many people's great, greatest and highest calling. But for me, that's not it. And so, like you said, there are 8 billion people in the world. And so we just have to correspond with that partner that we have and to know, like, what are they asking of us? Um, you know, are, are we, yes, there will always be compromise, but at the end of the day, I always believe like that person will never ask too much of you. They will be willing to adapt as you adapt as well. Um, but yeah, I think it looks so different and especially as, um, culture changes, times change, uh, relationship norms and traditions change, like these things are going to continue to evolve period. And so we get to be on that journey together and it'll have its highs and lows. It'll have its learning curves and we got to be okay with that. And and the thing that is so interesting is if you're the more aware person in the partnership, model that to the other person so they'll know what to do. And Emily, Emily, Isn't it sexy if your guy comes and says, I want to take you to coffee and I need to know all your sizes and what your favorite color is and what kind of flowers you like and how do you spell fly London shoes? I mean, I need (laughs) to know these things in case I'm out. And I see, I mean, if he's investigating you and Mm -hmm. he literally is trying to create a list of things so that he's got his head wrapped around. So when he walks in a mall, if he sees something, 
that's attractive. Yes. That brother is doing, that's called pursuit for you boys out there that don't know. That's called (laughs) pursuing a woman is sitting her down intentionally, Mm -hmm. pulling out the unique pieces of her. What kind of music you like, girl? Okay, good, good. Let me write that down. And and she'll find that attractive, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. When Whenever you do those things, it's like tonight where we were recording two podcasts back to back and Adrian brought me food and I was like, oh my gosh, you love me because gifts is one thing. Food is a whole nother thing. <laughs> That's um, what I'm saying. Yeah. And like knowing somebody like he knows my drink order, which I love, mm-hmm. you know, he's just like memorized little pieces of me and I've done the same for him. Like I brought him cookie dough the other day and he was like, oh. <gasps> Yeah, he lit up like I would have gotten him a brand new car. Um, Mm. So it is those tiny intentional things that we're studying of the other person that makes it special. And when we are aware of those, we can adjust as they change and grow. Um, Oh, there was one thing I was going to say about that and it left my brain. But yeah, just just being self-aware. And, ooh, that was what I was going to say. Self-aware of yourself changing and you being able to articulate that. Um, I'm somebody who feels very comfortable communicating my needs. <laughs> um, so, you know, if I need something and I'll be like, hey, um, I really need more quality time or I really need you to hold my hand right now or I need you to tell me that I'm doing a good job. I don't mind asking for things. Um, I just don't. Not anymore. Um, and so that also takes some courage sometimes and for us to be able to articulate. So I also just empower anybody out there, learn how to also communicate your needs to your partner because some people just are not aware. They're just not. Like we want them to be, of course, but there's sometimes you have to sit somebody down and be like, hey, in this season right now, this is what I need, period. Love it. Most people are unaware, in my opinion. Most mm-hmm. people are like, I said I loved you. Why don't you believe me? And it's like, uh, I need more than that. Mm-hmm. Well, you said w- your love language was words of affirmation. Yeah. I said I love you. No, use some different words than I love you and explain to me why you love me. I mm-hmm. mean, and, and I think it's one, model it. If you're the aware person, model it to the partner. Second mm-hmm. of all, is teach them. I mean, if they truly love you, they're going to want to learn more about how to take care of you. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Very rarely do you outgive your partner if you're being intentional about it. Mm-hmm. If you're showing love, giving love, being creative, they're going to reciprocate that and more of your needs are going to get met. It's not a selfless act. You do get more of your needs in that. But I do think love has a language and you better learn how to speak it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see if there was anything else in this area. But yeah, I guess like kind of takeaway is just to know yourself, know your partner, move and adjust as need be. Um, and there are way more ways other than just the five love languages that was written about with Gary Chapman. And don't put yourself or your partner in a box. We are all growing and changing, good Lord willing. And so we got to do that. And like I said, I just, I really admire Tina. I love Tina's honesty. She's incredible. Like for her just to call you out and be like, listen here, your love language has changed. You may not see it, but I see it. And I think that's awesome because sometimes we will have changed and we don't, we haven't noticed. Sure. Because life's happening so fast. And so when we can have a partner say that to us and communicate sometimes what we can't communicate. That's also such a gift. The greatest revelations about me have come from other people explaining my impact on them. Mm -hmm. And so I completely agree with you on that. Yeah. And before we wrap this up, I want to say, I I know we've talked about a lot of romantic partnerships um, with this episode, but this goes so far beyond that. Um, this is also friendships. This is coworkers. Um, I have a coworker that I just love buying her things. I don't know what it is. It's how I show her love. 
Um, and like, I I bought her a water bottle, and the colors reminded me of her, and I got it, and like, it was just so sweet to see how appreciative she was, and how that little act made us closer. Um, yeah. And so, don't just limit understanding how people give and receive love in a romantic sense. This is everywhere, of course, children, parents, um, but definitely your friends. Like, know know what your friends like too, because when they need love, you may be the and that's the thing. We may be the only person this person is getting love from. Um, you know, not even in a romantic sense, but um, on a friendship level. And I think it's really important to know how that person gives and receives. Totally agree. So quick story. Um, back in the day, I used to preach two services on Sunday morning, long morning. I never eat breakfast. So I had a meeting right after second service with, with a couple that was struggling, that was upset with me and stuff like that. And so I, I remember I didn't set up the meeting. My executive pastor did. I walk into the meeting to meet with the couple. It's been a long day. I've not eaten anything. I've, been, I've poured out. And now I'm gearing up for this. And they slid this can of peanuts over to me, mixed nuts. And I looked at them and said, what's this? And they said, you get hangry. (laughs) And I know you. And I want to make sure you have something to eat on before you go into this last meeting. And I felt loved. I felt known. It's like, yeah, you recognize this is a long morning for me. Thank you for the peanuts. It cost two bucks. You know, two bucks. But love was loud that day. Yes, yes. And we never know in those small moments where that 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 probably shifted everything for you. That meeting probably went totally different because Way they did that better. for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as we wrap up, show kindness, show love, learn the people around you. Learning other humans is a task, but it always pays off. It's always beneficial. Um, It will just always strengthen us, and we need each other. So I'm going to learn how to love you. Yeah, anything else from you, Nick? Love's important. Let's do it well. well. Let's do it. Love is important, so let's do it well. I like that. Friends, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Once again, like subscribe, follow, double tap, all the things um, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all all the places um, that you can listen and share. Please share the podcast. Um, We've had a lot of random people stumble upon us and find us. um, And so we're so glad you're here and we welcome you as our new friends as well. And if you've got a question, um, especially any kind of topic or something that you're struggling with that you'd like us to process, we're going to give you some solicited advice. And you can email us at letsprocessthatpodcast at gmail.com. We hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. See you, everyone.